guys, at muling nagbabalik ang inyong engineer, Beno. At uh, may bago akong topic na i-discuss. Pero bago ang lahat, um, agyaman na, dakal as salamat, muchas gracias, daghang salamat. Maraming salamat at thank you sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta at nanonood sa YouTube channel ko. Okay, so keep uh, watching and sharing my videos guys. Okay, ang i-discuss ko sa inyo ngayon ay yung tinatawag nating Milman's Theorem. Again po, ito ay isa lang theorem which means applicable lang to for a certain scenario. So, theorem versus law. Kapag sinabing theorem, at a certain scenario lang to applicable. Kapag sinabi nating law, applicable yun sa lahat. For example guys, Pythagorean theorem. Applicable lamang po yun para sa right triangle. Kasi kapag ang triangle mo na ay obtuse, iska din ay socialist, hindi na po siya applicable. Pero ang cosine law, applicable kahit anong triangle yan. Kahit mapa-right triangle ka man, obtuse triangle, or kung ano man. So, yun lang po yung difference between a theorem and a law. Kasi yung aaralin natin ngayon ay Milman's Theorem. This is a theorem because this is only applicable for parallel circuits. Kaya ang isang pangalan ng Milman's Theorem ay Parallel Generator Theorem. Sinasabi dito sa theorem na to na kung meron kang parallel circuit, pwede mong makuha yung tinatawag na V-out. Sa ibang reference ang tawag doon ay VXY or VAB. Basta yun yung voltage across each branch. At yung V-out na yun ay equal sa summation ng short circuit currents all over summation of conductances. So, paano ba natin kukuhain yung short circuit currents? So, yung short circuit currents po ay V over R lang. ba diba? Ang I or current is equal to voltage over resistance ng ano? Ng bawat branch. Take for example, ito pong branch na to, ang short circuit dyan is V1 over R1. Plus, dito, ang short circuit natin, short circuit current is equal to V2 over R2. And then sa third branch, ang short circuit dyan ay V3 over R3. E ano naman po yung conductance? Conductance is just the, ano, the opposite of resistance. So 1 over resistance lang yun. So sa first branch, yan ay 1 over R1. Sa second branch, meron tayong 1 over R2. At sa third branch, meron tayong 1 over R3. Okay? So, is it necessary na lagi ang branch ay binubuo dapat ng voltage source at ng isang resistor? Hindi naman po. Okay? Pwede pong wala yung ating voltage. Kung nagkataong walang voltage dito sa branch 1, wala yan, e di 0 over R1 po ang meron tayo. Pero pwede po ba ang walang resistance? Hindi po. Kasi for example, dito ulit sa branch 1, wala po yung excuse me, wala po yung R1, meron kang V1 over 0, which is infinity. Hindi po yun pwede. Pwede mawala ang voltage source, pero hindi po pwede mawala ang resistance. Okay? Then, isa pang kailangan yung tandaan, di ba, sa lahat ng drawing ko dito, plus minus yung voltage. Kapag binaligtad ko, minus, tapos plus, magiging negative V1 over R1 po yun. Okay? Yun po yung kailangan yung tandaan sa Milman's Theorem. So, para mas madali at mas maintindihan ninyo, solve natin ang circuit na to. So, sa circuit natin, meron tayong minus plus na 4 volts, merong 2 ohms, and then second branch, ang meron lang tayo ay resistance na 4 ohms, at sa third branch, ang meron lang po tayo ay 1 ohm, tsaka plus minus na 8 volts. Okay? Ang instruction dito is find the current at each branch. Okay? So, what we have to do, mag-assume tayo ng direction ng current. Again, mag-assume tayo dahil doon naman tayo magaling. Okay? So, let's say this is I1, this is I2, this is I3. Yang assumption ng direction na yan ay mamaya ko po gagamitin. So, we need to get Vxy or V out dito. So, V out 
is equal to the summation of the short circuit currents all over the summation of conductances. So, meron tayong negative 4 over 2 plus wala kang voltage source, it is 0 over 4 plus 8 over 1. And for the summation of the conductances, that is just the summation of 1 over resistance. So, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 1. At ang makukuha mong value ng V out dyan ay, itindutin ko lang, ay, sorry. is 24 over 7 volts. So, paano po yung gagawin natin para makuha natin si I1, si I2, and si I3? Yung bawat branch, puputulin mo yan at i-coconnect mo sa V out. So, paano yun? For example, dun sa first branch, ba ito yung first branch, tapos ang direction ng current na in ko ay ganyan. Okay. And then, ano yung V out natin? Yung V out natin is 24 over 7 volts. So, para magko-connect lang ako ng battery dito. Yan. So, yan na. And then, KVL na lang po ako. So, i-choose ko yung clockwise direction. ba ang mangyayari? Dahil si I1 ay sa lubong or against doon sa direction na pinili ko, magiging 2I1. Kung kasabay naman ng pag-ikot yung current, Doon sa direction kong pinili, minus naman. Kaya lang, ano nga po? Against, kaya positive. Tapos, labas sa negative 4. And then, labas din sa negative ng 24 over 7 equals 0. So, I1 here is equal to 26 over 7 amperes. Okay? Okay. E, eh, paano dun sa branch 2? Hindi po tulin ko po ulit. 4 ohms. And then, yung inasyong kong direction. And then, meron ulit itong 24 over 7 volts. Plus, minus. Again, clockwise po yung direction natin. And as you can see, kinonta lang naman or against sa direction ng aking pinili yung sa direction ng inasyong ko yung sa, assum sa assumption kong direction na current so that is 4I2 minus 24 over 7 volts equal 0 so I2 here is equal to 6 over 7 amperes and then paano naman po sa third branch e eh, di puputulin ko ulit Pababa ulit yung current ko. So, again, clockwise yung direction ko. Pero tingin mo na sa battery, lumabas sa positive 8 plus 1 times I3 minus 24 over 7 volts equal 0. And then I3 is equal to Negative 32 over 7 amperes. So, negative, ibig sabihin yan, yung naging assumption ko ay mali. Kasi hindi naman all the time, magiging tama yung assumption natin. Kaya nga po, assumption lang yung tawag doon. Okay? Kasi tayo, mga assuming tayo. Okay? So, for now, please copy. Okay, let us discuss another theorem. What we have now is the maximum power transfer theorem. Okay, di ba ang haba niyan? Pero ang sinasabi lang dyan sa maximum power transfer theorem, na meron kang voltage source with an internal resistance, itatanong sa'yo, gaano dapat kalaki yung value ng load resistance mo para makapag-transfer ka ng maximum power. Okay, 
pag yun po yung tinanong, by maximum power transfer theorem, dapat yung load resistance mo ay kasing laki lang ng iyong internal resistance. So, load resistance is equal to RS. RS is the load resistance. Okay, kapag yun po yung ginawa mo, magkakaroon ka ng maximum power transfer. At kapag tinanong ka, ano yung efficiency kapag meron kang maximum power transfer, ang sagot po doon is 50%. Okay? Yung maximum power transfer theorem, magagamit mo siya pagdating sa topic ng transmission line. Kasi mahalagang mahalaga doon yung tinatawag nating impedance matching. Impedance matching is um, example ng maximum power transfer theorem kung saan kailangan nating masunod tong condition na to para kung meron tayong 50 ohms sa transmitter, kung may i-coconnect ka dong linya, dapat 50 ohms din ang impedance doon para hindi mo matapon yung power. So, yun po yung idea ng maximum power transfer theorem. Again, the maximum efficiency is 50%. So, take a look at this example. A DC source has an open circuit voltage of 30 volts and internal resistance of 1.5 ohms. Find the value of the load resistance in which the maximum power transfer will occur. So, actually, by reading the problem, meron na tayong magiging sagot. Kasi nga, by the virtue of this theorem, your load resistance should be as great as your internal resistance. And it is very clear here that the internal resistance is equal to 1.5 ohms. So, ano dapat yung value mo ng load resistance? It should be equal to the value of the internal resistance, which in this case is 1.5 ohms. So, yun lang po ang maximum power transfer theorem. So, please copy and see you sa next video.